Right, today I've come out to the forest, it's New Year's Day and there is no better way to celebrate New Year's Day with a nice quiet campfire in the middle of a... Oh, just me and the woodpeckers. There's a woodpecker over there somewhere, it must be pretty close. Yeah, the, uh, the snow is pretty deep. This tree here I've used as a bench before now but there's about a foot of snow between it and the ground now. So what I've had to do is dig a hole, got rid of as much of the snow as possible because obviously if you're having a campfire in here the last thing you want is water in the fire so what I've done is I've cut three logs if you picture it this fire's upside down so I've built a base out of some decent sized logs because by the time I get some heat in there hopefully we'll melt some of this snow because there's a considerable amount of snow under here so I've put some logs on the ground uh, cleared off as much snow as I can put some little splits and lords uh, across there sideways, you've got some of those little uh, pieces there and I've got like a little bird's nest in the middle so that I can put smaller stuff on top and I can feed it for a bit, it's a bit like a top down fire but uh, not built in a, a nice pile It's uh, you've got to get your fire up off the snow or off the wet so once that gets going these logs in the bottom will catch all the uh, embers and that that fall down through there and uh, hopefully I can build up a decent fire it takes a little bit of effort in this snow but that's the reality of having a fire in this way which is why I bought my uh, winter pack with me today anytime you're heading out this time of the year always make sure you've got all your gear I've got everything I need in that pack everything is in there that I need to spend the night if I have to I've got tarps food water you name it first aid kit you name it everything's in there I've got my ohuhu hoo stove in there and everything this is a, an invaluable tool I've got a fold up shovel I do have one of those little metal fold up ones that you can uh, stick in your pack However, when it comes to moving snow, <laughs> those things aren't pretty brilliant. Good for digging holes in mud, but for moving snow, next to useless. The uh, I have all kinds of gear with me today. Now, this stuff, if anybody uh, was wondering what this is, this is just double-sided Velcro. It's, it's just Velcro that's got the fuzzies and the, uh, the grippy bits, if you like, on each side. You can buy this stuff off Amazon, you can buy a bloody great roll of it for next to nothing. And it is so good for securing stuff to your pack because uh, there's Velcro bits on the pack and what have you. But it's so good for securing stuff on there. That's how my spade travels in. I strap my spade onto the back of there and then uh, that way I don't have to worry about it. It's not in my way and it's not hitting me in the head. But it actually works really well. Right, I'm going to uh, clear out as much of this snow as I can. Tromp it all down and see if I can get this fire going. Now, it might take a little bit because... Uh, Obviously this snow does not help. <laughs> right, let me get that underway and I'll do some more in a minute. Right, I'm going to set that up on there. Not sure how well that will come out, but we shall see. The uh, golden rule in deep snow. Make sure you know where all your gear is all the time. I've got everything on little lanyards. So, let's see if I can get a spark. See, one spark lands on that cotton ball. We're good to go. As with always, make sure you secure all your gear as you use it. Don't put it down anywhere. Not in this weather, because you ain't going to find it again. Yeah. I've got a little bird's nest in there that will uh, help contain some of the, the little bits. And all I'm going to do is feed some of these little bits on top here. I'm trying to find nice dry bits is uh, not as easy as you might think in a forest full of snow however let's see what we can do <laughs> try to get as much of that snow off of there as possible Always make sure you have a reasonable supply of wood but they're like small pieces and stuff but don't pile it up mountain wise because you need to let the air get in there as well I can see the gas in the fire here see the flame and the gas that's a good sign already yeah oh yeah 
We got a lot of gas coming off there. That's good. And don't worry too much about the shape of the fire and all that kind of stuff at this point. A good messy fire gets the heat right in there. Right. She's starting to go already. That's good. But it's currently about minus eight, minus ten. But, uh, got to be a little bit careful here with the camera. Sun's coming up nice over there though. Look at that. That's nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera back in my coat, keep it warm, and do some more in a minute. Oh yeah, we are away. Look at that. Perfect. All right, let me concentrate on this, and I'll do some more in a bit. So after that initial um, flare up of small stuff, I got some uh, medium sizey bits in there, I guess. And as you can see, that's about as big as you want the fire. The flames on there just now were about twice that high. But that's all just small stuff. But if you look, oh, yeah. little bits all go down inside there, and they're going to sit in there. Once these bigger logs on the bottom start to catch, then uh, you know you're well away. But if you just build a fire straight on the ground, as soon as this snow melts, that's it, done, fired out. So that's no good. So if you build it like this, you can kind of just, now I can just add a few bits of wood to this every now and again. And it, uh, the logs are running uh, like east-west if you like, so the um, pieces I put on there are going to run north-south, just going to go crisscross. But, uh, and then that'll just keep going as long as I keep feeding it. And it's, but you don't want it any bigger than that really. But I can tell you, that is actually putting off a reasonable amount of, of heat now. So much so, I mean it's about minus eight. I've taken my coat off so I can use it as a bench. I'm not cold now at all, because there's, there's a good heat coming off that fire. The, uh, I have secured my axe and that already down on the side there. Always, like I say, when you uh, take stuff out of your pack, make sure you put it back in. You want nothing worse than dropping something on the ground in this kind of snow, because this is about a foot, foot, a bit of snow under here. But they're walking in here, there's some, some of the snow is really, really deep. But, it, uh, but that's about the size of the fire you want. Nice, easy fire. That's chucking off a lot of heat. That's actually a bit warm for the camera, but <laughs> that is uh, chucking off a lot of heat. And that is how you build a very simple fire in the snow. Yeah. It looks nice, eh? Yeah. Right. I will uh, find a few smaller pieces to put on here and uh, keep it going. Right. I'll do some more in a bit. Right. Well, it's going good now. Yeah. Gears all kind of stashed in one heap. I uh, haven't got my big saw with me today, I just got the 2000. Makes very light work of these smaller logs, much easier to do. And although I don't have a decent bench, yes, it's that time. Feet up, cup of tea in front of the fire. Doesn't get any better than that. Have to do it. Oh, that is toasty warm actually. The, the fire's chucking off some good heat. It's a good job I'm not sitting any closer. Now, if, uh, if I was planning on spending an overnight, <laughs> those logs would have to be considerably bigger. And uh, for an overnight around here at the moment, you'd need a pile of about 50 of them to get you through the night. <laughs> at least 50. Yeah, that's why uh, if you're building an overnight fire, that would do for a starter fire. But if I was doing an overnight fire, those logs would want to be twice that round. You want about five, six inches round, or big as you can get them, and easily move. You've got to bear in mind that in this weather, whatever you move, you've got to be able to move safely. But uh, no point in hurting yourself. Last thing you want to do out here is hurt yourself. Because you can find you till spring. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be a lot left here by spring. Just put some bits of plastic, and that'd be about it. So, I will enjoy my tea. I will enjoy my fire. And uh, today is the first day of 2023. Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, have a good one. Mm. And that, I have to say, is the best kind of brew to have out here. So, let's put that back on there. Nice. Yeah. The, uh, I've mentioned in my videos before, if you're cutting up uh, little branches, say for instance, I'm cutting up this one just to put on the fire, which I'm going to in a minute, 
the uh, I don't want to cut it there because now I've got to somehow hold this piece while I cut it in half so if I was going to cut this I would cut it there and then there because it's supported on the tree so I don't have to worry about it but, yeah. right let's put this back over here I've got some wood already cut up ready to go and I'm going to just sit and enjoy the peace of quiet and the sunshine look at that sunshine coming through the trees if that's not nice I don't know what is it's going to take a little warmer down here oh ooh. <laughs> yes the snow's a little deeper this one's down over the rocks at least there's no water flowing in this bit at the moment this is an animal crossing here so let's be a little bit careful yeah, a bit of water still in the creek it's real easy to cross the creek this time of the year so we try to do that in uh, spring runoff <laughs> best of luck with that yeah. right let me get back up over here Normally I have to step up over this tree that I've just literally just stepped over with no effort whatsoever. But there's like a foot or so of snow under here, so I had to do de a decent sized hole to put my fire in before I could get it going. Right, I'll uh, cut up a few more little bits there and uh, keep it going. Getting some good heat in there now. Those bottom logs are beginning to catch, so that's how you want to have the fire and how well that'll show up. But look underneath there it, uh, it's all starting to all the embers fall down now obviously if they fall down and land in the snow they're just going to go out however <laughs> that's why you build a fire up off the ground you cannot light a winter fire on the ground unless you have to be on clean rock yeah. and there ain't too much of that around here at the moment i can tell you there's many many feet of snow yeah. right i will put this back over there and cut up a bit more wood so I've just put a bunch of little tops on there just to show you something about fire safety in the winter. Look how much that's flaring up. Right, so I'm in the middle of a forest. It's got two to three feet of snow everywhere on it. Look at the height of those flames. Literally, they're, they're probably about three, three more feet, four feet at times. So you look at a forest like this and you think, there's no way you can have a forest fire in the winter, which you can. So that's a prime example of how big flames can be. I just put a handful of small stuff on there just so you could see. But the uh, my golden rule, same as I say every time I have campfire, once you light a fire, use your fire until it is absolutely stone cold. You are responsible for it and everything that it does. So that just shows you how quick. When I mean, you look at this forest, and you think, yeah, there's probably I'm going to guess two to three feet of snow on the ground in here, pretty much everywhere throughout this entire forest. But if that fire got up into the canopy up in there. Let me tell you, that'll spread from tree to tree faster than you can run. It, it is insanely fast. So although it is winter and there is a lot of snow on the ground, that's why I'm not too worried about the, the bigger logs. And I happen to know that under here is just a, a rocky river bend anyway. So it's uh, not too worried about anything underneath here catching fire. But obviously if you're out in the, the winter and you're having a campfire, don't assume just because there's snow everywhere that everything will be fine. Because it quite often isn't. <laughs> I'm going to go around here into the snow. <laughs> that is, uh, I don't know, that's a good couple of feet deep over this side. There's there's logs here that I normally have to kind of step right up over to, <laughs> to get in, but I, I can just walk over them now like they're flat, <laughs> they're flat to the ground. <laughs> right. But that just shows you that yeah. fire safety is still very important even in the winter. Yeah. More so in the summer because everything is so tender dry. But uh, this time of the year, I'm not too worried about a ground fire spreading, especially as I'm on rock. But if a fire got up into a canopy like that up there, oh yeah, you could be in trouble real fast. Yeah. So, even though it's winter, pay attention, keep the fire manageable. And that spade, that shovel thing that I've got, does double duty. Because I know that if I put a couple of shovelfuls of that on the fire, this fire's done. So... <laughs> The logs underneath there, I can see they're uh, starting to glow very, very nicely now.
this was some reasonably dry wood I found a piece that was uh, been up off the ground for some time so I've been working my way through that some of these trees are making some very unhealthy noises so I keep looking up apologies for the size here keep stopping and what have you but it's a good idea even though there's not much wind today you still never know what these trees are going to do and they're about 100 feet tall 120 some of these trees easy and it uh you don't want one of them landing on you even walking in here there's so many new downed trees that weren't here last time i came it's just insane <laughs> but that's what forests do yeah that's why it's important to, um people you know, they're, they're always complaining oh they they cut the trees they cut the trees but a lot of trees a lot of forests are grown as a crop you have to remember that they are grown as a crop and if you don't um thin them out and replant them and you know even clear cutting you clear cut them as long as you leave a good supply of wood on the ground like all the slash people say oh it looks a mess it looks a mess to a forest it doesn't look a mess to a forest that's food and it's like woohoo lots of food and the trees grow really really well so as long as you're using the wood for something useful then uh, that's great replant them and then you have that continuous cycle of trees because all the way through this particular piece of forest there's so many dead and down trees it's not funny it, uh, uh, they, trees have a lifespan same as humans we don't live forever trees don't live forever so they fall over they rot away they make soil but it's uh, the natural process would have been forest fires obviously to clear all that out but we don't have too many of those big forest fires now because we keep putting them out so <laughs> the, the natural process to reduce the fire risk it's actually pretty good what I do is I thin off a lot of the branches or like ground height branches that also makes it harder for a fire to get up in the canopies in the trees so when I'm camping I, I thin out all the branches that I can reach in and around the tree trunks around the bottom and that's how forest would have naturally been back in the day because all the uh, the massive herds of animals would have walked through them you imagine two million bison walking through a forest trust me <laughs> there, there ain't much left at ground level and not a lot left at ground level so uh, it is important to manage the forests very very important yeah and they replant them it's canadian law they have to replant them so yeah we'll go with that right i'm going to put my tea away and uh, see if i can put a few more logs on there look at that look how much that's uh, gone down already it's down there eh gets through it right i shall pay attention and uh, do some more in a minute look at all that snow <laughs> i've got to walk out through that lot yuck as you can see the, uh, the three logs in the bottom are well away now it also gives you the opportunity to poke some smaller stuff down in uh, the gaps between the logs because there's enough heat in there now most of the snow that's underneath there is melting away rapidly it gives you enough opportunity to uh, get some smaller bits under there just keeps it going but that is a really good self-sustaining fire now as long as I keep putting wood on there she'll just keep going that's good not too worried about that now and it is turning into a very nice day that is a good campfire that's how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> Not sawdust, eh? <laughs> a lot of deer tracks coming in here. On the uh, the drive in here, I'm coming down a really steep hill, and uh, I thought I saw something moving, so I started hitting the brake. Sure enough, a bloody moose ran across the road right in front of me. The, the deer, you can usually see them because you see the um, reflection of their eyes in the lights and stuff. But moose, nah, they're just a big, large, brown thing that lollops across the road in front of you. It, uh, it was a big cow, and uh, where it went, just hopped over the, the fence on the side of the road like it wasn't even there. It's probably about a three or four foot fence, I guess. And it uh, just hopped over it like it wasn't even there, and on it went. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. Right. I can still see my um, tea over there. It's <laughs> I have some food with me today. I didn't bring anything to cook with me today. I have uh, just some uh, like bars with me today. I've got cliff bars today. I haven't been able to get my Eat More bars at the moment. It, uh, they're in a bit short supply. I don't know whether 
factory burnt down or what, I don't know, but <laughs> the, uh, my usual supplier of those uh, isn't there. So I don't know why. So in there I do have some cliff bars. They keep you going all day, they're rather nice. Wind is beginning to pick up a little touch. If it gets really, really windy later today, it, uh, I will have to get out of here because uh, this is not a good forest to be in in high winds. But uh, and obviously I don't want high winds blowing around with my campfire and stuff, so I will uh, keep an eye on that. Great way to spend the day in it though, eh? Everybody would be out down the shopping malls trying to get their super duper deals from Boxing Day and all that kind of stuff. They put the price up 25% and then give you 10% off. Yeah, <laughs> deal, bargain. You could save all this money. Well, you can save a lot more if you didn't buy the product in the first place, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, we'll just wait a couple of months and then they're, they're trying to clear out all their stock then, so. Right, I will stop rabbiting, have another cup of tea and something to eat, I think. Now as the fire has progressed, you can see it's now melted its way back down to um, the rocks in the bottom. If you look at how it's melted, it's melted parallel to the um, fire. So if you were camping, very important to make sure if you're building a long, long fire that you're, you're laying parallel to the fire. And that's a perfect example. If you look at the fire on the end there, there's logs, snow still right up to the fire. Same on that end pretty much. But side to side, clear. So we're down to the, to, to the ground here. So if you had a fire reflector on the, the back of there, fire reflector does two things. Um, pushes the heat back towards you, so not so much of it is going that straight upwards, so you, you're retaining some of the heat from the fire, but it's also drying out the next lot of wood. So if you build a fire, which I see some people build them and they lash them all together with string and all that kind of stuff, and paracord and all that kind of stuff, yeah it's good, but if you put four posts in the ground that you can lay logs between, you can use that to dry out your next lot of firewood. So you put them in there and you can just rotate them around so that they're warming up and drying out. So now you've got a nice supply of um, pre-dried flywood ready to go on the fire. And as you use them, you, you take them out, the ones at the top, all nice and dry. So you use a couple of those and then you, you take it apart, put some more in the bottom and you just keep drying them out, you just keep rotating them around. But you can see the see here this side of the fire, it's nice and dry. Yeah, other side of the fire, nice and dry. The ends, nah. So if you're sleeping next to a, a fire, I mean this fire is nowhere near big enough to sleep next to, but you want to be about, if you're making a, a fire to sleep next to, this kind of fire, like with long logs and what have you, they want to be about the, the same length as you are tall. So if you're five feet, five foot logs, six feet, six foot logs and so on, you, you want them as long as possible, because you want that wood to burn as long as possible. Yeah, but that just shows you that the heat pattern from the fire, parallel to the fire there. Yeah, it's burning through quite nicely. But I did notice the wind's beginning to get up in little waves, and it can do this time of the year. So uh, what I'm going to do is let this burn down in there a little touch. I might just fold the ends in and turn it into like a, a makeshift teepee fire once they've burnt through the middle of these big logs. And then, uh, hey presto, job done. But that just shows you how you can very easily light a fire on um, a, a bed of snow. Uh, as long as you've got enough heat in there, it literally it will melt its way down to the ground, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there was probably only about six inches of snow under there, but the fire is slowly sinking into a hole. If you look, there's the snow next to it. It's uh, slowly sinking into a hole. I've got a stick here somewhere. Where are we? Yeah. I did have a stick, broke it in half. Yeah, see, there's probably about six inches or so of snow under here. Another piece of stick in the fire then. There we go, job done. But, uh, yeah, because I always have a pokey stick, that's what this stick was for. It wasn't as strong as I thought it was. So you don't want to be moving coals around with your hands. But, uh, always make sure keep the fire under control. Keep it exactly where you want it. Don't let it spread sideways. Because it will. <laughs> Roll some of them over. There we go. Perfect. And as you can see, those three big logs that I had on the bottom, they were probably three, three and a bit inches round, I guess. And it, uh, they're, they're burning through quite nicely. The middle one, I think, is actually this one. I think is actually broken in half. Yes, it has. Yeah. So I should just push the ends. That one. Get them in there a bit. Stop down. Crows are all getting very vocal for some reason. 
The trees are Isn't lovely up there. Look at that. Nice blue sky. It's supposed to have a whole bunch of this this week. That's good. Right. And that is how you do a very simple fire in the snow. That's a long time too. I mean, if, if I keep putting wood on there, I can just keep that going all the time now. These big logs underneath, I would uh, cut a few more of those if I needed them and just lay them across the top. Turn these ones sideways when they burn through and then just lay some more across the top. Try to keep the, the fire off the ground as much as possible because water is remarkably good at putting out fires. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think that will do for the mow. I'll catch up in a bit. So my nice organised fire has now become uh, a messy pile of logs all pushed into a heap as much as possible. And, uh, I'm just going to burn off as much of this as I can. But it, uh, I don't like living poles and holes of crap playing around. So it, uh, <laughs> just so this is how the fire progresses. It started off all nice and neat and tidy, and then uh, as it burns through the middle, what I do is I flip them round. You can see the ends have been turned around there. So I've turned them round so that the uh, the good wood's now in the fire. And as you can see, the heat pattern around the fire has now become circular as opposed to. Uh, a nice uh, rectangular pattern that I had. Uh, yeah, just turns it all around, gets everything burnt up. I don't want to leave too much stuff behind. Ideally, I uh, just want to leave carbon behind. Because as soon as it rains, you know, it gets washed into the soil. It's really good stuff for the ground, actually. Yeah, holds a lot of moisture. Plants love it. It's natural fertilizer. Yeah. In a few years' time, this whole riverbed up through here will just be full of nothing but trees and shrubs and stuff everywhere. So, that is rather nice. I might use that as a closeout shot for a bit, and uh, I'll do a, another bit when it's completely stone cold and gone. But I think that'll do for now. The sun is coming up. Beautiful day, look. Yeah. Let this fire burn itself down. Probably about another hour in this fire, I guess. Hour, hour and a half. And then I shall set off out of here and go and explore somewhere else. All right, that'll do for the minute. Oh, down to the last little flame. <laughs> Those coals are all still really, really hot. This is the point at which a lot of people think, oh, I just wander away and leave that. Nah, that can still, uh, still get a uh, pretty big fire going. But, uh, oh, there's the last flame has gone out. <laughs> I like to break all the coals up as well. But, uh, be surprised how long that would stay hot for too. There's, I mean, if I threw some more wood on there, that would just go straight away, no problem. But, uh, I just want it to die right down there. I'm going to break up all these pieces. So they're nothing but coals. And you'd be surprised how quickly that it is all just hot coals now. But if some fuel ended up on there, you'd be surprised how quickly that'll uh, be going. This is my uh, pokey stick. Wouldn't take very much to set light to the end of that pokey stick. <laughs> yeah, see, it's starting to smoke already. That's why I keep chunking it in the snow. Yeah. So I'm going to let that die right down, get that as small as I can, and then. Uh, pile her up with snow, stir her around lots and lots and lots, pile on more snow and then uh, make sure it's absolutely stone cold, and then what I do is I walk up and down on it, just to crush it all up but uh, very little mass in there then, very little heat mass once you've buried that in snow it's it's probably only about minus 5 now so it's actually not too bad, but it's uh, you, you'll be surprised <laughs> make sure you always stir it up, fill it up with snow stir it all around People tend to just pile snow on the top, but you'd be surprised how that long that can stay hot underneath there. Right, I think I will call that it for today. Thank you for coming along for the uh, campfire, New Year's Day 2023. Super. <laughs>